Right guys, Rio de Janeiro and yeah, I'm in the pretty much the centre at the moment. Plan is to get the funicular railway, the Trem de Corcovado, up to Corcovado. You know the Cristo Redentor, the uh, Statue of Christ with its arms outstretched. The thing that you must do when you're in Rio de Janeiro, isn't it this? Uh, it's supposed to be really busy, but I'll tell you what, the weather is pretty rubbish. So I'm hope, hoping that there's not too much of a queue today. Um, but then it'll be worth going up to the top one and see what I can see from up there. But why don't you come with me? I'm going to get an Uber first over to the ticket station and uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. I'll catch you in a bit. Right, well, that was easy enough. The, um, the Uber took me all the way here right to the front of the station, I guess you can call it. And um, buying the ticket was just a process of speaking to somebody in English, which is good. Going to the ticket machine, uh, credit card was easier, quicker, and they showed you what to do. And uh, they wanted to speak the weather, it's not too good today, but I would imagine that's why there's not much of a queue. And I showed my ticket and they said you can go straight up, and I guess we'll just get on the next train, so uh, let's see how it goes. Now the lower station here, Cosme Velho, is decorated with flags from all around the world. Uh, just join the queue line and yeah, you can see there are displays indicating the time of the next train. That looks like there's some sort of compulsory photo shoot which I guess they'll try and scam you out a load of money uh, when, you, uh, when you come back down later on. I might have to stand here but uh, I'm certainly not going to pay for a photo. Yeah, I tried to decline, but no, I had to stand there with the green screen behind me and yeah, no doubt I'd be pestered into buying a photo a little bit later on in the day. Anyway, ticket is checked again here and you're through the turnstile and to the station platform. Well, I'll tell you what though, between getting here and getting on the train, it's probably going to be about 15 minutes, which is apparently really good. As no queuing whatsoever, just wave me through, so yeah, all good so far. Looking forward to it. And here comes our train, number one by the looks of it, a Stadler two-car electric multiple unit. Now these trains were introduced in 2019 and are much faster than the old ones. Uh, when I say fast, I'm, I'm only really talking about a maximum speed of 25 kilometers an hour. Uh, but compared to the 15 kilometers an hour previously, it's still a lot quicker, isn't it? Okay, the main objective of this next point is to get a seat next to the window, isn't it? Yeah, everyone jockeying for position at this point. Uh, you'll note the seats are laid out in a 2-3 configuration facing uphill uh, with a mixture of forward facing and rear facing layouts. The first impressions, but yeah, clean, tidy, looked good. Also, this train has actually got Wi Fi, which is great. No air conditioning, but it has, has actually got Wi Fi. And it works really fast, actually. Right, so we are off, and uh, yeah, I think it takes about 20 minutes, something like that, to get from the bottom to the top. And um, we'll meet the other one coming down. So, uh, yeah, let's see how we go. It's, uh, not too crowded on here. Um, not many tourists under, or not many international tourists, I should say. Um, but yeah, let's see how we go. Hopefully, take some decent shots on the way. Although there are a few spots of rain on the uh, front windscreen, so yeah, fingers crossed. It's not too bad. Yeah, so ticket price for a normal adult return in low season at the time of this recording was 97 and a half Brazilian real. Uh, Brazilians get it a bit cheaper actually. And I, yeah, I found this tourist tax, I guess you could call it, quite common wherever I went. And yeah, it's just the way things are here, I suppose. You just pay the money and enjoy the experience, I think. And it's best to get a return. And when I was looking online, there were all sorts of stories about bandits robbing people who were walking up the road. And, you know, I don't know how true that is, but I certainly wasn't gonna risk it. The frequency of the trains was every 20 minutes between 8 and 5 o'clock weekdays and 8 and 6 at weekends. Now the increased speed of the new trains allows for three trains to be running at any one time. 
And as we reach the first of our potential stops here, Moro do Ingles, you will notice a descending train waiting in the passing loop just beyond the platform. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks like we just kind of stopped at a random hole so that some guy could sell water through the windows of the train. The other one's coming down now, let's have a look. Yeah, although these trains don't have air conditioning, they do have upper opening windows, which obviously cools things down a bit. And from a filming photography point of view, it enables you to take good clear shots as the train goes along. OK, so onwards and upwards, uh, you'll notice here that the track is now running across a low bridge uh, with a densely packed vegetation all around. It wasn't easy to see exactly where we were at this point. Now the line then crosses a rough track and we reach what appears to be an old platform on the right hand side. We don't stop, but continue bending around the hillside, passing what appeared to be a small landslide on the left, and we then reach another passing loop and another point on the line where the bank looks like it's yeah, given way at some point. So a few more stats about the line. Uh, the Trem du Corcovado was opened way back in 1884. Corcovado being the mountain that the train is built upon. Now, there are four active stations, the third of which we are just reaching now, Paneras Corcovado. Now, a little bit busy this one, isn't it? And uh, yeah, we meet the other train, number two, unsurprisingly, uh, passing it to the left this time, just out of the station platform. Now the line is 3.8 kilometres long and was constructed using meter gauge and the rig and back rack system. The maximum incline is 30%. Originally using steam locomotives, it was electrified in 1910 and as I said earlier, the new train's increased speed enables the journey to now be made in around about 15 minutes if need be. And it's not the only way to reach the top, the road also runs alongside at certain points, but yeah, this is the traditional way to do it, and on a good day, by far the most scenic. I think with hindsight, sitting on the right would have given me better views, but yeah, as I said to the gentleman next to me, it was a little bit too cloudy today, and I'm sure he understood me perfectly. <laughs> yeah, not much of a view today, unfortunately. I think we are just about, yeah, we just went past the lookout, uh, but there's not much to see, is there? There's not much to see today. It's a bit cloudy. We're in the clouds, are we? Yeah, anyway, we were pretty much in the clouds now as we approached the summit station at Corcovado. You could hear the jungle bugs from the vegetation of the Tijuca National Park all around. It's actually the second largest urban reforestation in the world, this is. He has just bought Well then guys, so yeah, at the top everybody's getting off and yeah, it took about, well just under 20 minutes wasn't it, in the end and the guys behind me are waiting to come back down again. So uh, yeah, I guess I'll just follow the crowd now and go to what is obviously going to be the reason why we're up here in the first place. Let's come and have a look. Yeah, it looks like you can either queue up for the lifts behind me there, or may maybe you can walk. 
I'm not quite sure. Uh, I think there's some stairs. We'll take the stairs because otherwise we'll be here all day, won't we? And the stairs are more interesting. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, we'll walk up the stairs and it's more peaceful, isn't it? Living here. Yeah, but then having said that, there were quite a lot of old people on the funicular, so I guess for them, the lift is the thing. Now, let's have, look at this for a view, guys. This is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah like i said i don't think i picked the best day to come up but uh you know i'm only here for a few days so maybe maybe the clouds are clear a little bit i can't see too much but i can see the maracana stadium over there but it's a little bit clearer and down towards there i think it's probably ipanema beach Definitely can't see that, but hopefully when we get to the top we can see a few more views over Rio de Janeiro itself. Let's go and have a look. At the summit there are a few cafes and gift shops, but it certainly wasn't tacky or overdone I thought, which was great. Um, yeah, the first views of uh, the Christ of the Redeemer statue are from the rear, whichever way you ascend the last few metres anyway. And yeah, at this point, uh, at least the statue itself wasn't shrouded in cloud. Now if you do take the lift, there are a couple of escalators after that, uh, which you can use to get to the base of the statue. So if you're elderly and you can't walk too far then, yeah, you can still make the pilgrimage, as many people do. Right. Made it to the top anyway, and I didn't take the lift or the escalator. Just got to try and avoid everybody now taking photos. Which is obviously not easy. Anyway, let's try and get around here a little bit. Not trip over anybody lying on the floor. Um, as I said, the views aren't great. But um, let's see if we can get a decent vantage point for what's behind us. There's not a lot of room at the top and yeah, when tour groups or school parties arrive, which they did do, it gets quite busy. Uh, but on a day like today, it wasn't too bad, I guess. Um, the crowds tended to fluctuate with the arrival and departure of the trains. And I stayed up here for a good couple of hours there, but yeah, the clouds didn't clear. They got worse, if anything. So eventually I found a quiet spot to just sit down for a minute and uh, sum up the journey. Right, well, the cloud is descending upon us. Uh, everybody's going, uh, so there's hardly anybody here now. Uh, is it worth it? Well, absolutely, definitely. Even on a day like today, because it's one of these things you've got to do, isn't it? It's, especially when you come to Rio, but just one of the seven wonders of the world. And yeah, okay, the weather's not great. If the weather had been amazing, there would have been massive queues down at the bottom station for the funicular, I can pretty sure of that. So I was able to come up here uh, pretty quickly, really. And yeah, like I said, it's one of those things you've got to do if you come here. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Thanks very much for watching and I uh, shall catch you on another adventure soon. As always, guys, cheers for now.